Hello everyone and welcome to this, the official opening of Bregerias Brewery here just outside Malmö. Uh, my name is Darren Packman from Beer Sweden, good to have you here. Uh, I'll tell you what we're going to do today. We are actually going to be looking inside probably one of the most exciting craft brewers that's actually started up in Sweden. Um, uh, and our host here today uh, is uh, Frederick, uh, Frederick Eick, who I'm very pleased to see. Well done. Fantastic day. This is going to be an exciting day. We're going to look inside the brewery a little bit later on, of course. And I think it's probably true that we're going to try a few of your beers, of course. I hope so. Anyway, that's why I've flown all the way over here to try. Um, but listen, the first thing we're going to do is, this is the plan, I think, the plan for the day. What we're going to do uh, is that we're going to look around the brewery itself. We're going to talk a little bit about the brewery, go inside to see where all the magic happens. This is almost like a little, one of those episodes of uh, MTV's Cribs. We're going to look inside to see what's uh, the heart of the brewery itself. Uh, and then we're going to actually sit down with uh, yourself and your two brothers. Remember, there are three brothers that basically uh, sort of uh, are, are, are the brains uh, uh, behind Bricariet. And we're going to sit down and talk a little bit about you and, and, and your plans and your visions for the future. Uh, but that's in the future. Uh, let's talk about the, the, the building itself. Uh, it's a fantastic looking building uh, and it's got a pretty amazing history, hasn't it? What's the story behind uh, the brewery itself? Actually, it started as a brewery in 1904. Um, uh, and then it became a brewery till 1955. Um, then it became a cork factory, so they made beer corks and cork mats and things like that. Uh, then it stood empty from uh, 1985 till 1996. Then it, it uh, got restored, and uh, now it's hotel, restaurant, and a brewery. So this this part of it here, actually, I don't know whether you can see this, but this part of it here is the actual brewery itself, isn't it? Okay, and then next door, and of course we'll be going in a little bit later on, you'll be able to see this. Uh, next door here is the actual, uh, this is the, the, the restaurant and so on, where people can come and, and, and try the beers themselves. Okay, so it was a cork factory. How long did you, I mean, did you, have, uh, you're from this area of course, that's true, isn't it? Yeah, I'm from Elmo. Okay, okay so you, you, did you always, when you were passing this building, did you think one day I'm going to open a brewery here? No, <laughs> that's, that's not that. Did you ever think you were going to open a brewery? No, never, never. <laughs> okay, all right. Now listen, I think if you want to come with me, uh, let's just walk over here. Um, and this is the, as I say, this is the actual brewery itself. And if you've been following uh, Brekeriet online over the last few months, uh, there is one particular green door that I think you'll see uh, and that you will recognize. This is the door. Is this true, isn't it? Frederick, this is the this is the door, uh, and it's a very symbolic moment, I think, because we're going to open those doors and go into the brew for the first time. Yes, that's the the door that was shown first on the internet, the magic green door. This is the magic green door. Okay, I think uh, without any further ado, shall we open that door and go in and have a little look around? Let's do it. Okay, right. This is a big moment, people. A great big moment. Let's push these doors. Thank goodness they weren't locked. Okay, and in we go, and here we find, hi there, Christian. Christian Eick. Hi there, Christian. Hard at work, obviously, hard at work. Uh, this is uh, obviously the, the brewery itself. Um, let's just have a look, if we can have a little look around. Uh, Christian, of course, you're the, you're the brewer, you're the sort of brewing brain behind the operation. Is that fair to say? Yes, yes, that's okay, that's all right. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're responsible for recipe development, for, for creating the beers and for actually sort of overseeing the brewing of them? Yes, I am. Uh, I have been brewing at home since 11 years uh, back and uh, I've learned a lot during that uh, travel. So, yeah. so you, you have no, it's fair to say, you're a home brewer by its sort of nature. You're not, you're not a formal trained brewer, you just got a, you're just a guy with a lot of passion. I'm a homebrewer from uh, the beginning, yes, so I haven't got any, uh, any school, uh, brewing schools. So, uh, but, but you do have a kind of a technical side to you. You, you have trained in the sort of science or the, a little bit of chemistry, is that right? Yes, I'm a master of science in uh, chemical engineering with uh, focusing on food engineering. So uh, I have the theoretical background. Okay. 
And if anyone who knows anything about brewing knows, obviously, uh, a little understanding of the fermentation process and the chemistry of brewing is actually a pretty useful thing, particularly the type of beers that you're brewing here. That's right. Yes, uh, that's right. Okay, listen, let's, let's, do a little, let's do a little sort of 360 of the brewery itself. As you can see, probably, it's a pretty small place. I don't know how, do you know how many square meters we're actually standing in right now? It's around 20 square meters. Uh, it's very, it's five meters up to the ceiling, so it's uh, the volume is bigger than the the, the floor yeah. area. Yeah. I think actually my bedroom back home in Umeå is it's about the same sort of size. To be honest with you, 20 square meters. But in this 20 square meters, some of the most expressive, exciting, I would say, beers in Sweden right now are being produced. Um, tell me a little bit about the actual building it. I mean, when you first moved in, when you opened those green doors for the first time, what did it look like? It looked like, uh, yeah. You're not allowed to swear now because we're actually live streaming, but yeah. I was uh, thinking of swearing, but uh, yeah, it looked like hell, yeah. <laughs> okay, so it was just sort of brick and a mess, and you've, you've spent, how long did it take you to actually turn that mess into what you see today? Uh, we started in, uh, like, say, April or something this year, and then it took uh, three or four months, you can say, to, to get it to what what's, it's today. And that's, that's you and your brothers, the three of you, basically working late hours, I can, I can imagine, to put this all together. It has been uh, hard work here, yes. Yeah. You haven't slept a lot since April, I imagine. I slept a bit, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, I tell you what, can you take us around the brewery yourself and just explain to, to us and to obviously the people watching, um, you know, what, what, what's what and, and what does what? Uh, we have here our brewing equipment uh, where we can make 250 liters per batch. Uh, so we, we have crushed malt we put in the brewing uh, equipment uh, where we mash and uh, lotter and boil. And then we cool the wort and, uh, into a fermentation tank. And we have uh, eight fermentation tanks, uh, 300 liters each. Um, and then we ferment the beer our normal beer we ferment around uh, four weeks, you can say. And then we have some, uh, some special beers we ferment on during a longer time. Uh, after the fermentation, we uh, pump the beer to this prime tank, where we add a uh, little bit of sugar to, to make the carbonation in the bottle. So we uh, bottle condition all our beers. And uh, after priming, directly after, we pump the wort into this uh, bottling equipment mm -hmm. uh, where we have, uh, we put in the bottles and then uh, uh, it, it fills the bottles itself and then one person is uh, putting on the, the caps. Yeah. And then we put the, the bottles in a box and then we ship it out to, to our warehouse. It's actually very interesting, Chris, and I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but when I first saw this device here, the bottling device, it looked like a toilet. Um, in fact, if you open it up, you'll see there's a cistern in it and everything like that, but uh, I'm sure the, the results were an awful lot better. Um, if we can just do a little sort of... This is, this is obviously the mash time. This is the Braumeister system, so you can get, I think, 200 litres ago in this one, can't you? Yes, 200 litres, and then we also have a small... Uh, a small Braumeister, so we... Uh, can have a 50 litres from that one. Okay, so this is 50 litres. I don't know if there's any home brewers watching, but obviously the Braumeister is a very sort of successful or very popular um, home brewing setup. But you basically got the sort of daddy of that, and, he, and he, here's, the, here's, here's the young one. Um, and, and as you can see, just walking around, you've got the fermentation vessels here, full of delicious beer, may I say. Bright tank here, of course, where the finished beer is. But this is probably not the most interesting thing about uh, Brekeriet's beer. Um, I think it's fair to say that the real soul or the heart of your beer uh, is the yeast. Um, and I think to understand your brewery, we need to understand the yeast. So let's just walk over here and have a look at this. It's very sort of, it looks like some sort of Frankenstein's laboratory. Um, can you explain to us, please, uh, Christian, a little bit about what's going on here? Uh, what you can see here is, uh, this is a fresh word that I added uh, yesterday to, uh, to some Brettanomyces yeast. So we focus on uh, the type of wild yeast called Brettanomyces. We add Brettanomyces to all our beers and then we mix it with Saccharomyces and some beer we brew with 100% uh, Brettanomyces. 
So uh, here it's quite cool to see the, the action of the yeast with the carbon dioxide building. Uh, this, is, this is another strain of uh, Brettanomyces, which has a uh, little different char characteristics from, uh, from the other strain. Uh, this we use in our, uh, in our fruit beers. Uh, we have a beer called Cassis, which I have uh, cropped this one from. So this is a pure Brettanomyces strain. And, and again, for people watching, uh, this is really uh, interesting stuff from a brewing point of view. Uh, the yeasts that are used in these beers are, are, are wild, uh, pretty untamed. They're kind of like the outlaws or the maverick yeast of the beer world. Uh, there's a lot of brewers that I know, and I'm sure you do, Christian, know as well, that won't go anywhere near this. In fact, if we ever actually went to their brewery, they'd probably ask us to wash our hands because they don't want anything like this getting into their brewery. These beers, or these yeasts are extremely sort of wild, obviously, by nature. Um, and um, uh, they add this very unique and distinctive uh, characteristic to a lot of Breckery beers, as, you're, as we'll discover a little bit later on today. Um, so really these are the, the soul. Would it be fair to say the sort of heart and soul of really what you're trying to do here? Yes, this is, uh, we love this beer. Uh, it's our company, you can say. Uh, it's, it's quite, uh, we have learned how to manage it in a very good way. I, I have uh, brewed with uh, Breton Amices for a couple of years at home now, so... And it's very interesting, really, again, uh, to see what you're doing, because whereas most of the craft beer industry in Sweden, and I would suggest in other parts of the world, they're going towards hops, and at the moment, hops are the lead singer of the band in most of the beers being produced. Uh, the Brekkeriet guys have gone the other way, and they've decided to concentrate on yeast, which is a pretty bold move, I may say. Um, so here's, some, here's the yeast. Here's a couple of... I'm not quite sure what on earth's going on over here, but it looks pretty cool. Um, could you tell me what these beers are? Uh, this is a test brew that we brewed yesterday and uh, we added, uh, it's 100% uh, uh, Brettanomyces, so we added the Brettanomyces yeast yesterday and now we can see uh, the fermentation is full, full ahead. Uh, it looks exciting. This is the moment, of course, when you see beer like this, you can see this is actually very, very active. There's lots of action. There's a nice head building on this. And if you can look right down here, you can see actually the sediment here beginning to build. So this is, and it's even slightly warm. So this is very, very, very young, fresh, rather overexcited beer you can see right here. Uh, you did mention one beer, actually, just a moment ago, uh, that you used this or cropped this yeast strain from, Cassis. Um, again, if any of you were at the Stockholm Beer and Whiskey Festival this year, uh, you would have obviously have been very fortunate to try uh, Brekkeriet's beers for the first ever time. And there was one beer in particular, wasn't there, that actually kind of stole the show, uh, and that was Cassis. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the beer itself? Um, it, it's a beer that we ferment with uh, Brettanomyces. It's a quite simple uh, word from the beginning. And then we ferment it with Brettanomyces, which uh, gives it a quite dry finish. And then after the primary fermentation, we add uh, berries, uh, black currants, uh, down to the fermentation tank. Uh, and then uh, it will mature on the, on the berries for uh, six to eight weeks, something like that. And you can see the Brettanomyces really loves the berries. So it's a very... It makes out with the barriers. Listen, um, it's a, it was a pretty good start, I think it's fair to say, because uh, in terms of ratings and feedback, Cassis, I think it's fair to say now, is the highest rated fruit beer ever created in Sweden, uh, in Swedish history. That's a pretty cool start. Yeah, uh, it's uh, amazing. We couldn't believe it. Uh, yeah. You must be extremely chuffed. Now, listen, uh, I do happen to know, and this is a little, this is a kind of a, a little scoop here, that um, you've actually done it again. Uh, you have another fermentation tank full of cassis. This is the kind of second generation, the second batch, and it's, and it's standing right over here. Um, I wonder if it would be possible, uh, if I asked really, really nicely, uh, to be able to get a glass of it. Uh, just a little, a little sort of sample. Obviously, it's not ready yet. It's not completely finished by any means, but it would be pretty cool if we could actually try. Uh, so if you can go and do that, uh, I'll stand over here all kind of excited uh, and see, um, and, and with my, uh, my uh, salivating at the, at, the, at the chance of this. 
And this people is, this is really why you should come to breweries because the, you very rarely get a chance to drink beer straight out of a, out of a tank. Um, so if you do get the chance to ever go to one of your, to, to your local brewery, please do that. Look at the color of this stuff. Absolutely amazing color to it. I'm mildly excited right now. Uh, so this is the cassis. As I say, it's black currant uh, and it's been, it's been fermented with, is it 100% uh, bread? Yes. It's 100% bread. It's, uh, uh, the berries have been on for uh, less than one week. So you can see it's a very purple color. And then uh, when the weeks go on, the, the color will be get more uh, red and uh, less intense, you can say. And if you ta when you taste it, you can see it's very fresh berry. Uh, I can, actually, I can actually smell it from here. I don't need to get my nose anywhere near the glass to be able to smell it. It's got this beautiful, fresh black... It's almost like they've just been crushed and thrown in there. Uh, I think, shall we just give it a little sniff and see what we get? And, and straight away, I'm, I'm getting a kind of, as I say, it's literally like the fruit. It's, it, it's like you've got a sort of black currant puree in here, with, with the, and, and that's really it. It, it. it smells like it should do you some good. I'm sure it will do. Um, let's, let's try some. Wow, is what I'm going to say. Well, I'm going to put that there. Listen, if you were lucky enough to try the original uh, cassis, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with this one. Obviously, it's young, and there's still a little bit of work for the yeast to do. Um, but tell me, in, in, terms of, in terms of the beers itself, I mean, your beers will change over time, won't they? Have you noticed that with your beers, that you know, drunk fresh, they, they taste one way, and then even a couple of weeks or days later, they, they, they sort of change character and taste different. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Uh, the bread and Master yeast uh, continues to work in, in the bottle and uh, change the flavor of the beer. It's a, a bit more uh, bretty or funky character, you can say. It's uh, from the beginning. It's very fruity, uh, and then it gets more, uh, more balanced, but more uh, funky, you can say. Funk is a wonderful word, actually. It's a word that uh, I always associate with sort of soul or something like that. But in the beer world, it basically means anything from is it things like wet dog, uh, horse, uh, blue cheese, lagord, if you're Swedish. Uh, all these kind of strange notes, but in some way they kind of work. And I think really in this beer in particular, with this lovely sort of berry note, with all this kind of funkiness, which is going to come through as this beer ages, uh, it's, it's a very intriguing, electric, exciting type of beer style. Uh, Christian, thanks very much for showing us around. I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little short break. Uh, we're going to walk around the building and go in and actually sit down and uh, have a little chat with both Christian, of course, Frederick, who you've already met, uh, and Andre, the three breaker, the brotherhood of, of a breaker uh, And we're going to learn a little bit more about you. I'm going to ask you some difficult, probably awkward questions about your background uh, so that we're going to get the story behind uh, the brewery itself. We're missing a brother. He's probably hard at work somewhere. Is it always like this? Yeah, I can imagine it is. Hi, Andre. I, I, I almost got lost in the brewery. Now I'm going I'm to go to the bar a little bit later on. 
okay, shall we carry on? Uh, well, obviously, you've, we've had a little look inside the brewery itself and seen where the magic kind of happens. Um, but I thought what it would be pretty cool to do is to sit down and actually talk to you three guys because obviously I always say that good beers and good breweries always have a story behind them and that we need to find out a little bit more about your, your, your history, your story, your motivation and your, obviously your plans for the future as well. That's something that we're, as beer lovers in this country, are interested in finding out. Um, of course, if no one knows, and just to sort of go across the, the sofa here, we've got Andre, you're the youngest uh, of the brothers. Okay, and then if we go to your right, obviously we've just met Christian, he's the brewing sort of uh, maestro. Andre, your, your sort of role in this, in, 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 in Brekeri, it is? I'm a production manager and a logistics manager. Uh, so okay. from the ordering of the bottles to the, to the bo filled bottles. So you're, you're kind of like the doer? You're the one that does it. Yeah, yeah, they, they say that. These guys basically think stuff up, but you actually deliver it. Is that fair to say? <laughs> I think that's I fair to say. Andre. I couldn't take all the um, take all the that credit. Credit. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> we every, everyone is doing um, a little bit of everything. So, but uh, I think my um, main um, uh, main uh, thing to do is to to keep the um, keep us together keep it running yeah. keep, keep the whole thing running yeah. okay and then Christian of course we've already said is uh, is the guy that's behind the the beer side of it and the, the brewing side of it the technique and so on and so forth um, and then obviously we've got Frederick who uh, introduced us to the building itself but Frederick what what's your sort of main role in the, in the brewery well, uh, my main function is to uh, to sort the economics okay. uh, to send invoices and, uh, and Buy stuff and yeah, things like that. Okay, so, so you're mainly economics. You're the and money the guy. Sales, yeah, and, and so sales, you look after the money, management. you look after the beer, and you look after everyone else. <laughs> okay, I think we got it. Um, now, listen, I got an older brother who obviously I love to bits some of the time, and I hate him most of the other time. I think that's pretty natural if you've got brothers or sisters. I'm sure most of us will know that. What's it like for the three of you to actually work together all the time? It must be a pretty intense experience. It's what? fantastic. It's fantastic. it's fantastic. You're saying that with a straight face, Frederick. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we, we complement each other very well. So, what the the if one doesn't think of anything, the next one think of two things, and the next one think of think of four things. So, the complementation is is great. So, are you are you very you three very different characters, or or, or, or so you do different things within the brewery, as it were. Yeah. How do you find it, Christian? Yeah, we uh, we work very well together, and we're quite like in the sense that we are, and uh, yeah, it functions okay. very well. Okay. It's it's not often that we uh, have any fights or something like that. Okay. So it's, it's All right. Great. Listen, the, of course, Brekeriet, the brewery, is something that's officially being opened right now today. But Brekeriet, the company, is something that started. Am I right in saying two years ago? I think back in 2010. Um, tell us a little bit about how you've your journey to this point today. Uh, we started um, two and a half years ago, you can say. Uh, by um, it was uh, Frederick who wanted to start a uh, company together, do th do something else, and uh, we felt feel, feel like uh, we need to meet meet more. So uh, then we started an import company. To import beer, so we import the beer from uh, Germany, Belgium, and France, and also some uh, cider from France. Then uh, we have always always have in mind to, uh, to start a brewery. So that was that was always your intention when you started the import company to one day open a brewery. Yeah, it it was, and uh, the intention now is to to continue with the import to get the. Com complete our uh, portfolio with uh, other beer as well. So uh, and now we can brew whatever we want. We don't, we don't have to uh, search for for the perfect product. We can make the perfect product, and then we can uh, also import other products. So. so how many how many products do you have in your portfolio today? Uh, including the the cider, 15, 16 Okay. Different kind of beers and, and cider. 
And I must say, when I when I first heard about your plans to open a brewery, and particularly the type of beers that you're going to be brew or you you are brewing, and I want to come back to that. Um, your, your portfolio. I remember when you first burst in on the scene, because you've always done things slightly differently. I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Um, you know the the way you, your stands at the shows and your whole attitude is very modern, of course. Um, and you've used technology in terms of uh, your, your screens and so on and so forth. Everything's yeah. been a little bit different, a little bit modern. Yeah. Yeah. And then you come along, of course, and say that you're going to start a craft brewery and you're going to do something that everyone else is not doing, and that is actually producing beers using wild yeast. Was that, is, are you just always like that? Do you, do you just try and do things slightly differently? <laughs> uh, no, but we... I think we were, were bored by the, the beer scene that was. So we, we wanted to make something new and then why not go all in on everything? Like our, uh, our stance on, on uh, the festivals and the, uh, the beers, the import beers, the cider. Cider is, yeah, it's magnific. Um, so different and all in I think that's the that's the word because we touched on it in the brewery Christian of course talking about uh, the styles of beers that you are you are creating and I think if there's anyone out there that hasn't actually tried sour it's actually sour, is sour the right word because not not all your beers are actually sours no. in, in the true sense of the word but using wild yeast shall we say shall we say wild beers yeah um, they are, they are, there's a very small percentage of the drinking population, I would, I would imagine, that actually enjoys these types of beers. I mean, Sweden is obviously, as we know, a huge lager drinking uh, country. Uh, I think some 90-something percent of most of the beers being drunk in this country right now are some form of industrial lager. Yeah, yeah. And then you guys turn up and say, we've got a brilliant idea, let's make some wild beers that only probably one percentile of the population will ever come to drink. What sort of business plan was that? I'd love to have been at that meeting. <laughs> what sort of business plan was that? What was your idea behind choosing that type of beer? And where do you see this market going? It was a lot of questions there. <laughs> a lot of questions. I want lots of good answers. Yeah. That's why we have a, such a small brewery. Uh, it's a okay. small market. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's quite uh, special products, of course, uh, but we uh, actually we drank a beer that were, was um, infected by Breton mices once, and then we thought this is great. Were they deliberately infected by Breton mices? It was uh, really infected. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we thought this is great. Can we do this? Yeah, by purpose then. Yeah. So we uh, we started to figure on that and. Uh, no one else is doing it in Sweden, and um, yeah, so that's uh, why we why we started with uh, this kind of beer. So in terms of so you're you're aiming yourself really at a very small section of the of the, of the beer drinking community, um, but you're there first, and you're going to commit to to brewing wild beers from this point onwards. Is is that right? Yeah, since we. Infected the brewery with uh, Brettanomyces. We we can't you, do any. You um, pretty much can't do anything else. No, but and therefore we can't uh, call any. Uh, our saison isn't by style a saison because it's uh, infected with Brettanomyces. But we think that uh, the yeast in these beers uh, give an extra dimension uh, with this uh, farmhouse feeling and. And if uh, this brewery, which originally is uh, an old brewery in a small village uh, outside of uh, Staffanstorp, it fits our beers uh, very nice. You've got a kind of rustic sort of yeah. countryside vibe to yeah. the building. And you're reflecting that in your beer. Tell me, um, technically, is it not right that you can, uh, you can infect any, or you can, you can make any type of beer style sour? Um, are there any types of beer styles that you would not touch or is it basically the gloves are off and you're going to go for everything? Can you make a sour IPA, for instance? What beer styles have you already tried and which beer styles would you love to give the Brekeri its spin to? Uh, we, of course you can make an IPA with Breton Mises. Maybe we will someday, but uh, we're not that ca we don't like hops that much. So, uh, we don't like hops? <laughs> 
There's only that's a one, controversial one, statement, everyone here. There's only one of our beers uh, that's uh, dry hopped. So everyone is just uh, bitter hops. Can you, can you do a quick run through of the beers that you've actually released so far? Yes, uh, our main product is uh, the Saison. It's, uh, it's called Brekri, it's Saison. And that's uh, fermented with both, both Brettanomyces and Saccharomyces yeast. And then we have uh, a smoked beer called uh, Roken, which is uh, brewed with almost 100% uh, peated uh, whiskey malt. So it's heavily, uh, heavily peated. And then we have made uh, some other saisons, you can say. Uh, one called Brilliant, Brilliant, but uh, mainly fermented with Brettanomyces, another strain that, than the other uh, Brettanomyces strain. And uh, then we have made a Cassis, of course. And of course you have a Christmas beer, don't you? Because that's something that's uh, well, it's not far away now, just around the corner with Christmas, but you've got a Christmas beer with a wonderful name to it. Can you tell us... Can you? And I love beer names, and I would say this is one of the best ones to come out of Sweden in the last few months. Can you tell us the name of it? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Do it. Bretlehem, 2012. Bretlehem, people. Bretlehem, absolutely wonderful. And that's 100% Brett, is it? Uh, no, it's, uh, it's uh, mixed. Brettanomyces and, uh, and Saccharomyces. But it's a very, very different type of Christmas beer. When you go out to the shops, you obviously, this time of year, you're going to get bombarded with Christmas beers, which, and I don't know if anyone ever watches when I talk about Christmas beers, but basically they're very sweet, malty, quite sickly beers. This is completely different. Obviously, with the, with the wild sort of spin, you're getting some lovely acidity to the beer. So that's one to actually put in the stocking, if you can ever get hold of it, of course. Uh, guys, in terms of the amount of beer that you're brewing right now, what's your sort of capacity? How much beer are you brewing? Uh, sorry, the capacity. How, how, much, how much beer are you brewing a month right now? Uh, we have the capacity to brew uh, around 500 litres a week. Uh, and then our intention is to have three beers that we will brew uh, continuously and have in our, uh, our assortment. And then we're going to uh, release experimental brews uh, like once a month or something like that. Okay, so you're looking at about 24,000 litres a year, is that right? And what's the game, what's the end plan? Is that, have you got visions of, uh, of um, obviously it's going well, your beers have been well received by the market. Um, have you got visions to become, uh, uh, you know, the, the Europe's most successful wild beer producer? Or are you happy at this size? What's, what's, what's the vision? Maybe not Europe's, uh, because... Uh, I think we should we think big. <laughs> 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 yeah, but uh, since we're the first uh, brewery in Sweden with this um, intentionally uh, infected brewery, we, we like to, uh, we like to uh, stay on uh, people's minds and uh, continue to... Um, <coughs> Uh, deliver uh, uh, very high quality products. Uh, is, is, that, is that the key to it? Is, it's, it's obviously you've got an experimental side to it. You've got this quite obvious desire to, 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 to do things differently. But quality is obviously, I'm sure, something that's very close to your hearts too. Yeah, we, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't uh, release a beer that we don't uh, think ourselves that it, it's uh, it's. So you're nice. trying every single batch. And this is what craft beer is all about, I think, is that this is a very personal brewery. Uh, these are obviously the brothers sitting here. You're, you're, you're working, you're bottling, uh, you're testing, you're tasting everything yourselves. And you're basically saying, if it's not good enough for you, it's not good enough for everyone else. Is that? Yeah, that's that's okay. right. So it has to pass your your sort of quality assurance before it leaves the brewery. Yeah, and we need we need to like it ourselves. Yeah, and uh, we can also say that we really like sour beer with the bacteria and uh, things like that. So uh, we're planning on a uh, little bar barrel aging and. Uh, bacterial uh, infected beers as well. Uh, oh, fantastic. That's something that I think we don't see enough of in this country, if, any, if anything at all, actually, barrel aging. So that's something that's going to be coming along in 2013? Uh, that, that's the intention, yeah. 13 and uh, ongoing. It, it's, it takes time. Are there any other, while we're here, and of course we've got some people watching, 
uh, on the internet. Is there any other secrets you can tell us? Any other little sort of, in, you know, exclusive little insights you can tell us about what's happening with your brewery over the next sort of uh, six months or so? Any little, any little secrets that you, you just want to share between the four of us and a few <laughs> other people watching? Everyone else, yeah. Um, do you have a secret? Uh, ask the money we guy. Have lots of secrets, but I don't know if we're we're going to tell it. But I tell you what to do. We're we're, we're uh, yesterday we brewed a new a new batch of uh, the uh, a fruit. Is this beer the beer base. that we saw in the? This is the beer that we saw in the brewery. No, no. Oh, there's another one. It's another one, yeah. Okay. So it's in the uh, back room somewhere. That's a beer that we're going to add another fruit or. Or uh -huh. vegetable, so there's another or fruit something beer like coming that. out of the in the future. Yes. Okay. Good. We got the inside track there. I tell you what, I think we'll do now is actually, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let you guys chill out here for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna pop over to the bar and I'm gonna have a chat with some drinkers because obviously we've heard your side of the story and we believe you, uh, but it would be quite interesting to talk to a couple of drinkers to see what they think about these very special beers of yours. Um, and then I think uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try and officially open this brewery. Should we do that? So if you follow with me, guys, thanks very much for the, for the chat. Thank you. I'm going to come over here uh, to the bar and see whether I can actually find, work my way to the bar. Um, you're with me. You're following me. I'm going to come over here. Guys, I wonder if I can uh, just interrupt a little bit. Hi there. How are you? Enjoying yourself? Um, hi guys, um, I'll tell you what I wanted to do, I'm going to hug you here a little bit, I'll tell you what I wanted to do was, um, uh, we've just been around the brewery, uh, we've spoken with the, the Brothers Ick over here, um, I just wanted to get a view from the drinkers, from you guys who obviously are uh, following what's going on and ask your, uh, you ask what you think about Brickeriot's beers, um, can I start with you, what did you think when you first tried one of their beers? Well, we know Brickery Beer from, from far back, since they imported the, the Kölsch and the French beers and so on. But what they do themselves is truly unique. It's truly also a Skåne thing. It's really uh, have the roots here in, in, uh, in Skåne. Which is, uh, and you're, you're from this part of the world, are you? I'm actually from Malmö, yes, yes. So I've traveled here from Malmö. Yeah. So this is pretty cool for you. This is a local brewery that's actually producing some very unusual sorts of beers. You must be you must be pretty pretty proud and pretty yeah, excited. Absolutely, since I'm a beer fan as well, I I love this uh, initiative. It's uh, it's unique, as I said. So uh, I, I I love it. Cool, Magnus, you've uh, you've got uh, what have we got here? Is that a glass of saison or? Kölsch. Yeah. It's okay. Like oh right. Okay. So you haven't gone sour yet or wild. You're you're, you're, you're saving yourself. What do you think when you first tried, maybe it was at the Stockholm Beer and Whiskey Festival? Was it? Yeah, last year at Stockholm Beer and Whiskey Festival. And this was actually the first beer I had. But the first thing that struck me with the, the, uh, the Eck Brothers was their charm and their witness, you know, uh, which struck me before I tried the beer, which makes me love the beer even more. And they do something that not many Swedish microbreweries do today. They have fun. They do Saison. They do Brett. We have a lot of good Swedish microbreweries today fantastic beers but these go their own way and as, as uh, Henning told me as well it's, it's, they're, they're unique they do something very very nice and local which is pretty cool and now they're open own brewery so it's just just amazing I would say it's just getting better and better in the Swedish beer scene right now future as well I mean having um, a brewer that dares to go the other way to make beers with Brettanomyces and wild beers in general I mean they, they, they have their own thing and I think I hope they can survive on doing that I think it would be great. I'm sure they will. Um, it's as you said. I think you made a great point there. They, and all of you have. They've gone their own way. They're doing their own thing. And I think there's an enormous amount of credit and respect for that. Uh, but the beers themselves, they're pretty awesome too, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, I enjoy the beers. I'm having the saison right now, and it appears you can compare it with Belgian saisons, and it's still good. I mean, it's a great saison. And that's a pretty big. Pretty big thing to say for a brewery that's only just started up, really, literally a few months ago. Um, thanks very much, guys. I mean, obviously, you're going to hang around here. We're going to drink a few beers together a little bit later on. Um, but let's just walk over here because, um, obviously, you can't open a brewery uh, without actually having a formal um, sort of opening ceremony. Now, of course, 
We were thinking about smashing a bottle of champagne on the side of the brewery, but apparently that breaks health and safety regulations, so we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to do something else which is a little bit more unusual. Surprise, surprise, of course, because this is break it. Uh, we're going to open a malt bag here. Uh, this is obviously the basis. The f the, this is the guts of most beers here. 25 kilograms worth of malt. Uh, Frederick, if you're going to do the honours, um, and we'll officially open um, break it at Brewery. And there we go. And in doing so, I think it's fair to say we're throwing malt around the place. The, the Break It In is now officially open. I think we have a round of applause, everyone. Fantastic. Guys, all I can say is from obviously from, from a beer lover's point of view, and there's lots of us in this room, congratulations. We admire your enthusiasm. We admire your spirit. We admire what you're doing. You're doing a fantastic job. You're breaking a few rules. We love that. Carry on doing what you're doing. I think what we're going to do now is we're just going to sit down, have a little chat amongst each other, perhaps even try a few beers this afternoon. What do you think? Um, thanks for having us and uh, good luck with everything you do in the future. I don't think you need it, but uh, anyway, good luck. Well done. Cheers. Britannomyces yeast.